unfortunately, our next speaker is joining us via Zoom online. Uh, uh, Anna Tukic, she's a fan manager, a board advisor, and a FedTech entrepreneur. She has a doctorate degree in financial economics from Imperial College London and is frequently appearing in media as an investment expert on Bloomberg, BBC, CNN, CNBC, and, and others. Uh, many interesting and great things in her biography. Let's just highlight two. As a founding partner of AIM, she raised two billion uh, pounds, uh, assets under management, and while at UBS, she was a head of portfolio construction, responsible for portfolio construction, and risk manager of five billion in managed account programs. Uh, she's also part of the advisory board uh, at Imperial College London, and she'll join us over Zoom. Dub double side. <laughs> yes, hello. Hello, everyone. I hope uh, you can hear me well. And I'm really sorry I cannot uh, join you today in, in person. Um, not only that I would love to meet all of you in person, but also I uh, am a Belgrade girl, and I wish I was, I was there right now in person. So I'm going to tell you something about the changes uh, in the asset management industry and how technology is actually framing the space. Uh, asset management industry is one of those heavily concentrated industries uh, that is obviously uh, managed and governed by a small number of institutions. And uh, we, we have seen a clear trend here that uh, young generations, they uh, want to take control of their financial decisions and they want to actually implement the trading models themselves. So what they really lacked over the last years uh, was the right platform or the right uh, system that enables them uh, to make uh, these decisions in a meaningful way. Exactly as we have seen uh, during the past presentation, who will want to speak over the next few years to their banker, who wants to be stuck in some, in some queue, uh, getting some sort of uh, advice that is not even optimal under the circumstances. Large institutions uh, actually have, have lagged when it comes to technological challenges. And many of them are using technologies uh, that are 30 years old. After the global financial crisis, uh, entire IT budget uh, was being spent on adjusting the systems to avoid regulatory and compliance risk. And the regulators all over the world joined forces to actually support small companies, fintech companies, uh, to launch their products, uh, to actually have those advanced technologies, uh, and to address these huge inefficiencies uh, in the market. So what we have started working on is a uh, smart, uh, smart device, a tool that enables uh, stu initially students and later a wider population uh, to actually learn how to make financial decisions themselves. Uh, uh, so what, what happened over the last few years? Uh, uh, fund managers uh, have reached a stage where it was very difficult to make meaningful financial decisions around 2017. Uh, many managers switched to passive mandates saying it's impossible to outperform the markets, it's sufficient to just buy the index, and almost uh, there was a challenge whether active management is going to, to, to survive. And what happened after that? Big data happened. So all of a sudden, we got a large amount of data and uh, we got all these new tools uh, to uh, actually facilitate analysis of the data uh, through machine learning because econometrics itself was not, no longer uh, available to, to analyze and is crushing when analyzing those large uh, data quantities. So uh, all of a sudden, uh, new segments, new market segments emerged and fund managers were very, very happy, especially hedge funds, that new asset classes emerged, such as crypto, and uh, new data sources. Just to remind you, if you want to be a successful fund manager, you need to have an edge. You either need a better access to data, or you need a better way to process the data. 
So now those ones who have access to big data and those ones who have access to superior data scientists are, are well positioned uh, to make the best uh, possible financial decisions. What also we have discovered is that uh, uh, latest advancements uh, in generative AI can actually have huge uh, advantage when it comes to education and when it comes to trading. So we have uh, teamed up uh, with, uh, uh, with a team of leading data scientists uh, creating um, a generative AI platform that can actually uh, implement uh, verbal reasoning, not just acting as uh, one uh, huge database. So uh, when we speak about uh, the future of the financial system and the fact that actually most money is being managed uh, in a very similar way, uh, such as some 20 years ago, we can see there is a big challenge uh, to actually improve and uh, potentially uh, democratize uh, that financial industry. Uh, so this is where we, where we stand at the moment. I also want to remind you uh, where crypto stands in this space. Uh, we can draw a parallel uh, compared to the way uh, things were some 25 years ago. So hedge funds emerged. When hedge funds emerged, they were actually the pirates of asset management industry. Why did they make these extra returns? Is because they were implementing strategies uh, that large institutions did not have. They did not have the mandates uh, or capacity to trade those niche markets. Over the years, large institutions introduced themselves absolute return fund. Uh, they developed their teams uh, that can trade those new strategies, eliminating many of the opportunities that those small hedge funds had, and eventually they ended up just with small teams without the right operational support. Similarly, now, as we are going uh, through the crypto market developments, uh, we can see that uh, there is a trend that more, uh, more importantly, large institutions are considering uh, crypto as additional asset class. So where does it leave us? It leaves us in a space that uh, at some time in the near future, uh, large institutions uh, will look to invest uh, in, into different cryptocurrencies after performing more due diligence. So we can see the parallel with traditional uh, asset management when teams of analysts are actually analyzing tokens uh, and uh, issuing different ratings and trading them in real time. And when big money actually pours into crypto assets, uh, they will reduce volatility uh, because these investors are not just high frequency investors, they're buy and hold investors uh, that invest uh, in, the long, in the long term. And that trend is also looking to uh, reduce uh, the volatility in the market and, of course, to reduce uh, some of the opportunities for higher, higher returns. But I can see crypto uh, becoming uh, an additional asset class. Uh, following the developments of Binance uh, are actually quite interesting. And seeing how the regulator is going to take the next steps, uh, finding the company is actually putting the exchange in a similar position as some of the large uh, banks that the reg regulator has fined over the last years uh, for different uh, problems uh, in their trading. So how Binance survives this big challenge uh, is the question uh, how the regulator is going to address, whether as a mainstream player or some platform uh, that can be shut literally overnight. So what does the future hold? Uh, how, how does a perfect uh, financial industry look like if we can think about that? Many participants should actually have access to some of the data. And data providers should allow a wider group of people uh, to access uh, data on stocks and commodities and high quality data, maybe not high frequency, but some good quality. And uh, 
these people should be really empowered and trained uh, how to manage risk, how to build a portfolio, even how to write a code. Even coding is uh, becoming uh, a commodity. There is so much open source when it comes to uh, coding of uh, trading strategies that it's literally combining the source, making their own calls, managing the risk, creating a portfolio, learning about diversification, and uh, giving them the platform that can actually manage the risk. Also, uh, looking at how to combine uh, asset classes. So now we have not only equities, fixed income, commodities. Now we have that crypto. And how does it sit in a portfolio? Is it correlated with equities? A regulator is treating it mainly as a stock or an equity. Uh, is it a risk asset? has high correlation. Whenever there is a market sell-off, of course, uh, crypto has a sell-off too. But crypto and digital currencies, they have their own sectors. Should they be more correlated with corresponding sectors in traditional market uh, is, a big, uh, is a big question mark uh, for the future. Um, however, the good thing is that uh, new data, new data sources, and new ways to analyze the data with superior technology are providing uh, fintech companies with the tools to actually uh, take the part of the large uh, asset money management pot and allow enable people to do it themselves in an educated in an educated way. Thank you. So uh, I would like to address the questions. Hi, Anna. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for delivering this talk. So you were actually explaining a bit. Can you hear me or? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, okay great. So you were explaining that nowadays the younger generation are taking basically financial decisions in their own hands. There are a lot of resources, a lot of data is available, a lot of open source that is said. So as a fund manager, what would you say kind of the future of the markets would look like? I mean, so now the markets are becoming more open and much more retail investors are there as participants. So how do you see funds and professional, so institutional players versus retail traders? So. Those ones really who never had a bank account all of a sudden are joining as uh, customers uh, in financial markets. So the market first is going to change because uh, in different Western economies, Yes, uh, younger generations uh, will be looking to do it themselves. Uh, these are generations that are used to easing solutions uh, to, uh, to Ubers and uh, Airbnbs and Deliveroo's. Uh, but also, we have generation of the world joining, uh, joining the investment, uh, investment side of the story. So yes, we are going to see massive, massive changes where a retail customer is making a significant uh, inroad uh, into the financial markets. At the same time, uh, we can see how quickly the large institutions uh, will develop uh, their own technologies and how quickly they will embrace uh, digital assets. You can draw a parallel with, uh, let's say, emerging markets. Uh, back in '96, it was unthinkable for a large, uh, for the large wealth management company to invest in emerging markets. They were perceived as too risky. Commodities were not even considered. So slowly but surely, uh, large institutions are embracing a new asset class, always searching for new ways of outperforming the markets. So they will be adopting uh, those digital currencies and new technologies at a slower rate. They will be acquiring small fintech companies uh, with clients with better technologies and so on. But I can see that uh, the retail customer will be uh, more empowered and better positioned to make uh, their own decisions. It is also putting a huge pressure on the fees 
uh, of the large financial institutions. And that is something that the retail customer uh, has aligned uh, with the regulator, because that's exactly what the regulator wants uh, by empowering uh, smaller fintech companies, is to put pressure on, on the fees of large companies. Are there any more questions? Yeah, questions. Yes. Do you have any questions? No. Okay, then uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your attention. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye.